My name is Austin Watson, and I want to change the world by design, using inceptional thinking. Many of you look at the word inceptional, and because I'm a man with a remote and a tie, you assume it's a word. Well, it's not. It's made up. But then I think, weren't all words made up at some point in time? Well, tonight, I'm going to make this one a word. When I say design, what do you think of? Architecture, paintings, interior design. Except I'm not going to be talking about this interior, but with this one, your brain. You've come here tonight either because you're hopeful that we can in fact dissect change, or because you're proud of your kid's ambition, or just because you thought your ex named Ted was going to be here and for some reason you still can't get over it. <laughs> either way, you've made a decision. You've designed your evening to include this event. Now since I'm the first speaker, I feel obligated to kick this off properly because if you can't change your thinking, you won't be able to change your world. Our talks tonight have continuity. They've been designed to follow a linear path with steps and stops to reinforce this ability to change. Steps go up, stops go, well, stops don't go, stops stop, and goes go, but goes go slow though. Stop, that was an accident. Which is better to use, stops or steps? The former, I choose the latter. So, step one. Design. It's a huge part of our lives. It's 33.33 repeating percent of TED. Every conscious or unconscious decision we make determines and designs our outcome. The people we associate with, the places we go, the choices we make. Our world changes by design. And if we can no longer design, our world can no longer change. Inceptional thinking is an effective way to design, and one of the few ways innovators can have original thought anymore. Our society has become so complex and advanced that it's become incredibly difficult to do that. The route we now have to take becomes finding new perspectives on old ideas, recycling them, and redesigning them. When you have a recycled milk carton, it's not just another milk carton from the previous life reincarnated, but rather pieces of many other paper products combined together in a purposeful way to arrive at the format of a milk carton. When you think inceptionally, you repurpose things to provide a basis for something new to sprout from it. I was inspired by this idea while sitting in my media messages class last year, and I was advised to use Keynote in an unconventional way. Now, Keynote is Apple's version of PowerPoint. It's the presentation software we have on our school's laptops, and ironically, the program I'm using right now to present. It's a medium heavily relied on in our society and in our schools because it's simple to use. You put in your information, you add some graphics, and then you present. It's the baseline of presentation. However, by using Keynote over and over again as this medium, we convey the same message of, here's this information I learned, now you learn it. I came to accept this as well. It's practical. It makes sense. But if used to teach, is it particularly exciting to learn from? I'd say no. If you rely solely on Keynote to present, you won't stand out. And if you want to change by design, you've got to stand out. The work I've done in my media class changed my perspective of this program, which created a domino effect in my thinking. I began to use it as a canvas rather than a format. I began to design each slide as if it were a frame of a scene in a movie. And then I began to enjoy the simplicity I found in using digital stop motion animation to communicate my messages. What I do is, I'd insert a medium within a different medium within a different medium, the movie Inception, if that resonates at all. And then I'd find free pictures and fonts on the internet, and I'd use them to develop a scene based on whatever theme seemed most relevant. Then I'd create the animation and push it through iMovie, which is Apple's movie making software. In this short clip, my project focused around the psychology of writing. Now, inceptional thinking got me taking a different angle at Keynote which in turn got me taking different angles at really anything I decided to create from that point. The line of my project was, our brains eat up words. So by taking the literal meaning of that sentence, instead of what the line was actually supposed to mean, I thought of a brain consuming words. But what could I do with that? You all eat with your mouths, I hope. I hope that's a shared experience. But so I thought of looking at the brain as a mouth instead of a brain, and then it looked like Pac-Man. <laughs> so 
So I was able to redesign, recycle, refresh this idea by just taking a different yet simpler approach to the subject. I manipulated the medium of Keynote, then the medium of arcade games, then the medium of Google search, <coughs> then the medium of pictures to change the way someone would view a figurative sentence. I see inceptional thinking as a way to solve a problem. You use whatever and all means necessary in front of you to find a solution. In this next example of the intro of my project titled, How to Spot a Liar, I thought of interrogation. I wanted to set the mood and convey the sense that liars always change under a different light. So I went through the same process again and came up with this. It's an L, by the way. So, I didn't have to think harder to solve my problem. I just had to think smarter. I used what I had at my disposal to improve my project. I didn't have to create anything extraordinary. I just remained simple. Yet, it sort of grabs your attention in some way. So you're probably thinking to yourselves, Austin, how does this crap apply to my life? What can I do to think inceptionally? Most of you don't have a media class. Most of you have been out of school for how many years? But think about it this way. We need to design and develop new ideas. In order to improve and change our world, we need to use what is available to us now. We need to take all of that, and we need to build on that. We need to improve that. What we depend on today in our society is accountability. We should really be depending on capability. We need to redesign our brains to think, what am I really capable of doing, instead of, what do I need to do today just to get by, to earn a buck? to feel safe. We need to turn conference calls into board games, um, job interviews into Jeopardy tournaments, grocery stores into obstacle courses. We can't look at everything for its face value, but rather flip it over, turn it around, look inside it. From that point on, we can redesign the world, but first we must redesign how we think. Thank you.